In the case of Hayloft and its bizarre and swift rise to public consciousness in the last couple of years, we've been given this beautiful and rare opportunity to look back into a song that's a decade plus old, but through the lens of a whole new generation. I really like Hayloft because of the guitar. When I discovered Hayloft, it was about the same time as when I first started questioning my gender identity. Even just listening to it gives me the confidence to wear what I want and not stress about how other people perceive me. It gets me in such a good mood and I have great moods with me and my dad singing it everywhere we go. I listen to the song every single day, whether just in my earbuds or even screaming it at the top of my lungs when no one's around. And you know, we've learned way more about this story through them than we ever could have unearthed ourselves and furthermore it's allowed us to ask the question is there more to this story and I guess the answer is yes being that we've taken on the ambitious and potentially foolish task of writing a sequel You know, one of the best things about songwriting is giving it away, is giving the meaning away to the listener for them to reshape and define for themselves. Like everything from the lyrics about this young couple in the wrong place at the wrong time, sneaking around, eating lead, from the scary farmer man and this kid who just seems to like relish in his father's killing, it's, it's chilling. It feels like that feeling you get when you do something you're not supposed to do. It kind of makes me feel vulnerable because my dad's in the army and we don't have a really good relationship because he's very overprotective and really worked that onto me when I was a child. So when I'm listening to Hayloft and I hear the lyrics, my daddy's got a gun, you better run. I get reminded that I never have to go through that phase of my life again. It has to come from a true and inspired place. It can't be for the sake of itself. And most importantly, it has to resonate with the fans. And what's nice about the modern day is that a band can jump online and directly communicate with their audience and seek counsel and catch a temperature and run an idea past them because, you know, we might be called Mother Mother, but it is the fans who are the true parental figure. And we want to make our parents happy and proud. One thing that we've learned from Hayloft 1 is that it's good to take some risks in songwriting and dare to be a little unconventional because back in 2008 radio stations weren't interested in playing a song like Hayloft and even our label didn't want it on the record. You know now fast forward 13 years and it's our biggest song to date and the moral of the story is, you know, be yourself even if you're getting a message from the outside that being yourself isn't the most viable path forward. Because guess what? They're wrong. Ultimately, we want to take care of this story and take care of the characters in this story. And it's fair to assume it might wander in the direction you think it would. It's a revenge tale at the end of the day. 
but not necessarily a bloody one because sometimes the best revenge is taking your power back and releasing the hold um, a toxic idea, person, or force has over you. Sometimes forgiveness is the best revenge. So it's these themes that come to mind when we think of Halof 2 and themes that we hold dear in general. But ultimately, we won't really know what this song is about until we hear back from the audience, the fans.